Hey there guys, welcome back to another video here at Top Tier Garage. Today I'll be showing you how to take your regular pedal bicycle and for the low price of around 200 bucks, turn it into an e-bike. So I'll be walking through step by step on how to do this entire project, so stay tuned. So first we have a little bit of backstory. So this was a recent project that just popped into my head because we recently got like a little kids trailer for that goes on the back of this. It's like a little two person buggy. And it got me thinking, I'm like, man, that is gonna absolutely suck to drag around an extra 20, 30 pounds. So out of sheer laziness, I'm like, I started looking for options, how to make things easier and a uh, hub drive, pedal assist motor and I kept looking into it and looking into it. I'm pretty mechanically inclined. So I figured I would, the cheapest route to go was to convert the bike that I already had. Cause if you look at e-bikes on Amazon and stuff like that, you're not going to find one for under 500 bucks that is halfway decent. But for 200 bucks, we can make this thing just rip. So before we rip into the bike itself, I'm going to go over the parts that I ended up buying. The majority of this entire kit came off of Amazon. So I ended up getting a 42 volt, 1.7 amp charger. The motor controller itself, which is just this little box. I mean, it fits in the palm of your hand. So it comes with a bunch of extra attachments, but honestly, I'm not going to do any pedal assist. Mine is going to be throttle only. So the only thing you really need is the throttle itself and the display. And then you also have to get a extender for the front wheel because it has a, like a little eight pin. It has a little eight pin connection here and depending on where you mount your controller, I mean technically you wouldn't need that if you would just mount your controller to the front fork of the bike. But I'm gonna have it all on the back side of this bike. So for all that stuff that I bought on Amazon, that turned out to be about $130. And this, this Bafang 350, 350 watt hub drive motor, I actually got off of eBay and that turned out to be 70 bucks. So all in all, between all that stuff and also a bag of connectors for that, that was about $200. But the, the part where you can spend a crazy amount of money or go super cheap is on the battery. So in order to put together like a full, functioning e-bike those are the main parts and that turns out to two hundred dollars so i ended up picking up this 360 uh, watt hours battery pack from jag 35 now this was more of an expensive battery i think this totaled out to about 110 dollars but you can go smaller this thing should give you about 25 to 30 miles of range depending on how much throttle usage you use but as you can see, this thing is a freaking tank. I think it's four inches by 18 and it weighs nine pounds. So what I plan on doing is I have this rear cargo rack. I plan on mounting this on the back side of the bicycle and attaching it like this because as you can see, I have a full suspension bike here and this battery is so big it does not fit decent pretty much anywhere I mean you could mount them like this but overall it's not gonna work great so the very first thing we'll do is tear into the wheel all right so time to tear into it so now you gotta remember that this hub motor is universal fit so what they mean by universal fit is that something is guaranteed not to go the way you plan. So I already loosened these off camera. And the thing is you have to remember where all these spacers go because you have to put them back on the same exact way. All right, so with that being off, I am gonna take the disc 
off of another hub that I already had. I'm going to transfer it to this guy. So from the looks of it, I'm going to have to transfer over to scrub brakes on the bike. So when I was on eBay, I also found some, uh, some damaged wheels and stuff like that. So the rim was actually bent itself. These, this was a used motor that came off of some kind of e-bike that is rolled around the city. And then once it's decommissioned, they're basically tore apart and sold. But as you can see, it's the same exact Bafang motor. But this one actually has a disc brake in front. But as you can see, the hubs are a little different. So technically, you could take all the spokes out of this one and the rim and transfer it to this one. But that is going to be a little too much work for this guy. So I am just going to end up not changing over from disc brakes in the front just to the ones that grab the side of the wheel. All right, so after messing around with it for like 15 minutes, I finally got it. The wheel is finally mounted. I had to add the spacer. Uh, this wheel actually comes with a hardware kit with the two nuts on each side and a spacer. But I had to offset it this way because this was actually rubbing on the shock itself. So it also has these, this style that tuck in the bottom to keep the motor from spinning. And also, do yourself a favor and... Make sure you use some thread locker on these nuts so that they don't rattle loose and your front wheel falls off. Now, I will end up torquing everything down after a few miles because I'm not going to go mock Jesus on this thing right off the bat. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to run black zip ties up and to the back. But first, before we do that, we actually have to add the cargo rack I'm back. After 30 minutes, it's finally installed. It even comes with a nice little license plate rack or a rear trail light if you'd like. But this thing was a pain. So because I had a full suspension, you got to take out those bolts and attach it on the back side and directly up top there. So this rack was extremely cheap. I think it was $14 for the entire thing, but it'll do. But you can definitely tell by the parts it is made super cheap. So now what we are going to do is we are going to secure the battery on the back side. So now we have the battery securely mounted with eight zip ties. We got two going across the rack and then one holding forward pressure on it. This is the battery connection. The controller is going to sit right here. I also did mount the front cable. So it comes up, the connector here, put it on the bottom, on top. Got to cut those yet. But so because I have a front suspension, you're going to want a little bit of slack here. You can be a little bit more lenient if you have a solid frame bike. But also make sure that you can go full lock each way without completely destroying your cable. Not, not like you're going to be cranking on it that bad. But the cable on Amazon that I got is like the absolute perfect length. So it doesn't look the greatest with the zip ties, but there is no other way unless you drill into the frame and then like kind of snake it through. So we ran that through and these are the connectors that will go into where the motor is. Turned out pretty nice so far. All right, now time to mount the controller on top of the battery. So we got this guy installed. So all you had to do is bend it over the handlebars, but I would highly suggest taking a heat gun and heating up the back side of that so it doesn't snap. And then when you bend it around, just tighten it. So now, depending on your throttle, this thing's gonna look janky if you have a gear selector, if you have just a regular standard bike it's not going to matter but you'll notice that it sticks out quite a bit so there is a trick in order to get like these stock handles off all you do is you take a compressed air gun similar to that guy right there and then you use that and you just slowly work it all the way off and then this guy just slips over and you tighten it with a little screw right there 
and then you run all the cables along the frame so you guys i had an amazing idea so i had this old case laying around from one of my previous videos it's a, the apache case from harbor freight and i thought i would incorporate it in this build so what the controller itself is in there what i did was i had to drill a hole in the side of it now i will silicone that shut because i had to make room in order for the battery the battery to reach and for the front motor to reach so now this thing is cool i just it's just currently zip tied but all the controls and everything in there so what you could do is actually do some cable management cut it in half and you could actually use it for maybe a spare chain or something like that but i thought that was pretty neat i, I had it sit on the shelf so there you go it's pretty much all put together now i do i'm gonna heat shrink heat shrink this and then i'm gonna make sure all the battery stuff is good and then we'll be able to start her up so now that everything's hooked up we are gonna power it on so you just hold the power button for a few seconds it'll turn on so when you first get it it will be in kilometers an hour in order to change that all you do is you hold the up and down arrow at the same time and that's how you go through all the settings uh, depending on what voltage your battery is uh, once it gets below that certain voltage it will automatically cut off battery power so you don't over drain your batteries and all that good stuff but then you just cycle through and p4 zero is kilometers an hour and then one is miles per hour and then to get out of the screen you just hold up and down and it'll go but the main thing you're going to want to know on the screen is the assist levels. So you can hook up the sensor and it'll help you out with pedaling. But if you're just going to do a throttle only like I am, you can have it. It limits the amount of power that goes to it. So assist one and it goes all the way up to five. I keep it on five. And then when you twist the throttle, I mean, it really wants to pull. And as you can see, hope you got a bunch of spare tires laying around. And that is how you convert your pedal bike into an electric bike that will absolutely help you coast up hills and make biking 10 times more enjoyable when you can just coast when you want to. You can still go anywhere, even if you're tired. And also, it will help pull a kid's little buggy if needed. So uh, due to the fact that it is like 30 degrees out right now, I will not be doing a road test just yet. So remember to stay tuned, hit that subscribe button. I will be doing a road test. I'll be testing the mileage and how fast it goes and all that stuff in an upcoming video. So thanks for watching. Top Tier Garage.